This is our second pre-calculus review. This is section 1.2 in the book. Um, again, this is a brief review of the material in the book because this is all stuff that you've seen before. Um, if you have questions on these topics, double check your textbook and email me or come to office hours. Quotients of polynomials are called rational expressions. Since rational expressions are quotients in which the variables represent real numbers, the properties of real numbers apply to rational expressions as well. And operations with rational fractions are performed in the same manner as operations with arithmetic fractions. For example, x plus two times x minus three over x minus two times x minus three is equal to x plus two over x minus two. We've just canceled those x minus threes. And that's as long as x does not equal two or three, since then we would be dividing by zero. A rational expression is simplified or in lowest terms when the numerator and denominator have no common factors other than one and negative one, and the fraction contains no negative exponents. Multiplication and division are performed with rational expressions the same way they are performed with arithmetic fractions. P over Q times Q over S equals PR over QS, as long as Q and S are not equal to zero. I don't know what happened to the Q and S there, but that's they were supposed to be there. Likewise, P over Q divided by R over S is equal to P over Q times S over R, which is PS over QR as long as QR and S are not equal to zero. Likewise, addition and subtraction are performed as with arithmetic fractions. It's easiest when the denominators are the same. P over R plus Q over R equals P plus Q over R as long as R is not equal to zero. P over R minus Q over R is equal to P minus Q over R as long as R is not equal to zero. But we can work with rational equations with different denominators the same way we would we would fractions with different denominators. Find the prime factors of each denominator, then form the product of the different prime factors that occur in the denominators. Each prime factor in this product should be raised to the highest power of that factor occurring in the denominators. So here we have 2x over x squared plus 1 plus 6 times 3x squared over 3 uh, over x cubed plus 2 x squared plus one and x cubed plus two are prime. They have no factors smaller than, than themselves except one. The denominator of the sum will be x squared plus one times x cubed plus two. We could multiply this out, but generally we do not bother unless we're told to do so. So we have two x over x squared plus one plus six times three x squared over x cubed plus two. That's equal to 2x over x squared plus 1 times x cubed plus 2 over x cubed plus 2 plus 6 times 3x squared over x cubed plus 2 times x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1, which gives us 2x times x cubed plus 2 plus 6 times 3x squared times x squared plus 1 all over x squared plus 1 times x cubed plus 2, which is 2x to the fourth plus 4x plus 18x to the fourth plus 18x squared over, again, x squared plus one times x cubed plus two. So finally, that's two x times 10x cubed plus nine x plus two, uh, that should be nine x squared. Um, nine x squared plus two, yeah all over x squared plus one times x cubed plus two. Sorry, sometimes I make typos in these things. Hopefully you understand what I'm going for. If you don't, get in touch. The techniques used to simplify rational expressions may also be used to simplify algebraic fractions that are not quotients of polynomials. For example, we can simplify x to the negative one plus y to the negative one over x to the negative two minus y to the negative two by using the fact that x to the negative two minus y to the negative two is, e, is a difference of squares. So that's y to the negative, x to the negative one plus y to the negative one over x to the negative one plus y to the negative one times x to the negative one minus y to the negative one. So that's one over x to the negative one minus y to the negative one, which we can rewrite as one over one over x minus one over y which is one over y minus x over xy. And then we can just flip that 
to get xy over y minus x. When the denominator of an algebraic fraction contains sums or differences involving radicals, we may rationalize the denominator. We transform the fraction into an equivalent one that has no radicals in its denominator. When we do so, we use the fact that the square root of a plus the square root of b times the square root of a minus the square root of b equals the square root of a squared minus the square root of b squared, which is equal to a minus b. So if we rationalize the denominator of the expression one over one plus the square root of x, we multiply the numerator and denominator of the expression by one minus the square root of x. That's one over one plus the square root of x times one minus the square root of x over one minus the square root of x, which is one minus the square root of x over one minus the square root of x squared, which gives us one minus the square root of x over one minus x. We can also rationalize numerators. It's not as common, but we would use the same sort of procedure. Properties of inequalities. If A, B, and C are any real numbers, then the following are true. If A is less than B and B is less than C, then A is less than C. If A is less than B, then A plus C is less than B plus C. If A is less than B and C is greater than zero, then AC is less than BC. If A is less than B and C is less than zero, then AC is greater than BC. So we want to solve the inequality x squared plus 2x minus 8 is less than 0. To do that, we're going to note that x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equal to x minus 2 times x plus 4. So the given inequality is equivalent to x minus 2 times x plus 4 is less than 0. Note that x minus 2 times x plus 4 equals 0 if x equals 2 or x equals negative 4. So we check the values of the, fact, of the factors. When x is less than negative 4, negative 4 is less than x is less than 2, and x is greater than 2. If x equals negative 5, x minus 2 is equal to negative 5 minus 2, which is negative 7, which is less than 0. And x plus 4 is equal to negative 5 plus 4, which is equal to negative 1, which is less than 0. So both factors are negative when x is less than negative 4. The product of two negative numbers is a positive number. So the value of the expression is greater than 0 if x is less than negative 4. If x equals 0, x minus 2 is 0 minus 2, and negative 2 is less than 0. And x plus 4 equals 0 plus 4, and which is 4, which is greater than 0. One factor is positive, and the other is negative when negative four is less than x is less than two. And the product of a positive number and a negative number is negative. So the value of the expression is less than zero if negative four is less than x is less than two. Finally, if x equals three, x minus two equals three minus two, which is one, and that's greater than zero. And x plus four equals three plus four, which is seven, which is greater than zero. Both factors are positive, and the product of two positive numbers is a positive number. The value of the expression is greater than zero if x is greater than two. So the only case where the expression is less than zero is if negative four is less than x is less than two, which is the solution to our inequality. The absolute value of a number a is denoted a in these two bars and defined by the absolute value of a is equal to a if a is greater than or equal to zero and negative a if a is less than zero. Here are some properties of absolute values. The absolute value of negative a is equal to the absolute value of a. The absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. The absolute value of a divided by b is equal to the absolute value of a divided by the absolute value of b as long as b is not equal to zero. And we've got the triangle inequality, which says that the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. So let's say we want to evaluate this expression, the absolute value of the square root of three minus two plus the absolute value of two minus the square root of three. We note that the square root of three is less than two. 
So the absolute, so I shouldn't have put those absolute value signs in there. Abs uh, the square root of three minus two is less than zero. So the absolute value of um, the square root of three minus two is negative square root of three minus two, which is the same as two minus the square root of three. Now that should have been the absolute value of three. That should, this should have been a plus after uh, before that second that two in the middle there. So the absolute value of the square root of three minus two plus two minus the square root absolute value of two minus the square root of three is two minus the square root of three plus two minus the square root of three, which is four minus two times the square root of three, or two times two minus the square root of three. 